Okay, there are a lot of professionals on the on YouTube, um, but few actually have a degree. <laughs> How many of these guys actually even have any degree at all? You know, I have a degree. You know, how many of you guys actually have ever had enough money to actually go and get a degree? Um, okay. So, um, I want to talk about virtual reality and augmented reality, uh, pros and cons, and also talk about um, using 3DOF and 6DOF and pros and cons. Okay, so, virtual reality is is everybody knows what the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality what I'm just gonna lay out is is that virtual reality is for people who live in apartments okay because you don't have to get up and move around in in virtual reality uh, I mean not virtual reality um, that's three off but I'm okay what I really need to say is virtual reality is for people who live in apartments who really just um, who really just don't want to see where they are you know they're sick of looking at the four walls in their apartment they're not really all that entertained by the limitations of their environment they would probably prefer to have a bigger house okay and to be out in the country somewhere that is the reason why you would want virtual reality okay is because you're wanting to be somewhere else you're not wanting to be there and um, you probably live by yourself and because you live by yourself there's no reason to see your your surroundings you probably don't need to see you're not gonna have to mind children or things like that that would be a reason to have augmented reality okay virtual reality you're basically covering your entire vision if it's at night and you pay a lighting a lighting or electricity why have your lights on when you're in virtual reality because you won't be able to see your room so what's the point in having the lights on turn them off um also it's better for your security if anybody ever should break in they're not going to be able to see you unless they got a flashlight and you'll be able to hear them coming in to the apartment you might be able to hide yourself or figure out a way of getting out of the apartment but anyhow um, you could basically be in your apartment nobody would ever know your home and be doing virtual reality um, and you know maybe maybe there are security reasons for leaving the lights on but the thing is is that you're actually saving electricity and you don't have to look at your apartment and I mean you don't have to look at the, the, the mess it's in um, and I mean those are the you have to think about those pros you know um, the cons to VR to virtual re um, I'm really describing two things here I'm describing 3 dot virtual reality um, so the the pros and so I assume it's 3 dot that you're working in if it's 6 dot then you're probably going to want a bigger place okay so maybe I'll just I'll go over all over the dimensions here okay virtual reality with six stop six stop means you can move trans you can move through space in three directions we've got our X and our Y left and right up and down forward and backward okay that's one set of three three degrees of freedom the other three degrees of freedom is to be able to rotate around in one plane that is the in this plane to rotate around that plane and to rotate in this plane so one is you're tilting like that that's one plane this plane is the one where you your, your turntable plane and the other one is this plane the going through there and so those I mean you can think about it if you just look at if you just take two coordinates you know left and right and forward and back and you can make a circle and that that's one plane and then another one is to take the up and down and make planes from the other coordinates so the forward and back and up and down there's another circle and if you look and uh, you take the left and right and the up and down you've got another circle okay and 
sometimes in 3D programs they represent that as a ball. You can look at a ball, if you can draw a line around the ball in one place and then take a line around another area of the ball, um, that will, that, so that they intersect but they're completely at orthogonal ends to each other, they create a cross. And, and and then you find somewhere else that you can do this on the ball where it will create a complete cross between the lines and you will get all of those three degrees of freedom of rotation. And um, so that is six stop. It is three degrees moving in this direction, up and down, and three degrees in rotation. That is our all our reality, you know. If you can do that, if you can move around in that, you can go anywhere in your room. The problem is with six DOF on these headsets is that it has to see details in the room. If your if your room doesn't have much details, if it doesn't have much objects in it, then it can't really determine where it is with respect to I mean where you are with respect to the rest of the room. And so it's trying to it's trying to figure things out about that and it might actually jump if you don't have enough features in your room okay so I'm assuming that I have not I have not had one of those headsets but um, I've seen from the videos people call those things sensors they're cameras okay there are four cameras on these on this oculus and the cameras are actually sitting there comparing um, features where corners where it can see corners are and if it can see that uh, on cameras the corners are in different spots uh, with respect to them, it can tell that it's in a three-dimensional space somewhere. And that's how it's able to determine where it is with respect to the room. Um, if you went into another room, then it probably would lose um, a concept of where you were with respect to the corners that it just was correlating. So. Um, it doesn't know where you are in the room. It doesn't, I mean, it does, it knows, um, it has a compass in it. And um, it has, it doesn't have a compass. It has rotational and it can, and you can turn your head and all of that. That's where it gets the rotation stuff from. And it can tell you are with respect to objects in the room, but it can't tell where you are in physical space. So it can't tell you where you are on a map. And so if you move into another room, it might um, stop. It might stall the, the experience. And when you into another room, it, uh, it might be able to start it up again, but it will do it with respect to that room and not respect to the room you were just in. So you can only move so much, so far in the reality um, before it actually will lose its bearings, okay? And, um, so, and augmented reality is, would need such things as well. Um, however, six dot, uh, six stop. Um, the thing I would say about six stop is, is that you can stand up, you can move around and do things like that, but you need to have the space to do that. And if you're in an apartment, the only way you're going to get that is if you're to clear out your living room of all the objects so that you can go around and move around and, and stand up and, the other thing is is that um, if you're like me an older person and you might not be so um, you might not have a very good uh, not very good balance because they, you lose that as you get older is the ability to keep yourself steady um, it will you will fall over you will hit something you'll get there's greater chance and this is so that for somebody who um, needs to be concerned about keeping upright and you know they don't want um, they don't want the virtual reality six stop now augmented reality would probably be a lot easier because you can see everything around you but it isn't that you're going to see them with your own eyes you're going to see them with other eyes outside of the headset and so it's still going to be disorienting um, it's probably best not go to straight to to um, six stop, and um, and there are a lot of people that prefer to do augmented reality. They don't like virtual reality because they 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 like to be able to see things around them. But 
for me, I don't have any desire to go to six stop. Um, I, I'm sure there's a wow factor, but I'm saying that uh, the amount of experiences they have in six stop don't really attract me. The most of the attraction uh, in VR these days is the VR 180. Um, the VR 180 is going to be able to, I mean, videos are going to be able to show you. You'll be able to see um, <laughs> lots of lots of different si times of co content from other people's perspectives um, in the world so that you effectively get to go someplace else. Now, having six stop is not going to make that any better because there's no way that you're going to be able to move and six stop in a video. Um, the only the only experiences you'll have there will be six stop will be computer graphic based. They will not be video based. Um, and the reason what is obvious is because you've got a video stream. That video stream only cares about one thing: is if you can rotate your head. It doesn't really. It can't really provide you anything more than that. And we'll never be able to provide anything more than that. Um, there might be some day in the future where they might be able to use multiple cameras in different places and then do some sort of um, some sort of um, of interpolation between the two between all the different uh, dimensions um, that's for the future but right now there's no way to do that so if you're wanting that uh, <laughs> wait for the future that's probably when it's going to happen but it's not hap it will not happen now and um it will depend it'll depend on the technology they develop i can imagine some ways they might be able to do it but they're it's not going to happen um now and it's not it doesn't exist so um the only thing that you can do is computer graphic based six stop and uh three dot is pretty much everything so um the oculus go is your best bet if you're planning if you don't want to fall over if you don't want to run into things if you're living in an apartment and you're by yourself and you pay a lighting bill and you would you would probably have your tv on and and your neighbors complain that the uh, sound is too loud or something when you play your tv set these are good reasons for you to have a three dot Oculus Go because that way you're sitting in a chair in the dark, you don't have the TV on, nobody can hear anything but what's on your headset, it's playing sound, you don't have to have headphones on, the sound is good enough that um, it, it will cover your whole head area and, uh, and it usually is pretty realistic sounding. And so it's it's as good as if you were sitting in front of your TV set um, I mean for if you're gonna watch TV oriented content the area where it's bad is the resolution's terrible um, you're not going to get your kind of 4k experience from your TV set it's like you're back on your old VCR if you're looking at content that's off in the distance but uh, the difference is you get stereo and you get um, you will get experiences that will be first person in wherever it is and so you can go to a far off place and see far off things you know um, museums and whatnot and you don't have to leave your your room and so it is um, it is your vacation okay it's your way of, of, of getting away from your limitations your you, you don't earn a lot of money, you don't have a big house, you don't have all these things, but if you have the Oculus Go, you've pretty much done away with all of those limitations, and it really doesn't matter where you are. If you're in the bathroom, you can use a Go. If you're, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's like the extreme. Um, if you're in the office, you can have a, you can pull the Go out of the, out of the uh, drawer, put it on, and have a virtual experience be someplace else and um, you can do meditation you can play games you can do whatever you want and you don't have to use your cell phone to do it um, which is other another plus you don't have to use one of those stupid headsets 
those are really only to kind of get the foot in the door to let people experience what they're missing. Um, but they're not, they're not the best. The best is the Oculuses. They're the best. And um, the older Oculuses are worse than the newer Oculuses. And the newer Oculuses are self-contained. You don't have to use a computer to, to experience this stuff. You're, it's, it's, um, it's untethered. But I, I tether minds, and the reason why is because I don't like to just have a one hour experience. I like to have like a six hour experience. I like to sit around, play Minecraft for six hours, or do whatever it is I want to do for six hours inside of that virtual experience. And, and you can sit in your chair in, a, in an Oculus Go, and you don't have to get up, you don't have to walk around. Um, see, the younger generation that wants a virtual re reality experience, they want all of that. They want to be able to move around and look under things and do stuff like that. The older people are not really going to want that. Um, because, I mean, how many older people do you know that really want to get up and, and move around? No, not very many. And so we tend to, send, tend to prefer to sit in a seat. Um, 360-degree... Uh, experiences don't attract us I mean they don't attract me so being able to turn your head around like uh, I like that girl out of um, out of the exorcist you know nobody has the ability to do that with their head they'd have to actually move their body around so you'd have to be on a swivel chair to have that experience and the only time that experience is is worthy is just if you're in a video game and uh, or if you're in an immersive environment and you're you've got stuff all around you, there's something to that. But most of the time, you're just going to have the R180. So there are there are people that want to push the the sixed off 360 stereo experience that you're actually there, and uh, but they will never be able to touch um, anything of actually going to another place that's not going to get you anything um, because there's nothing to do. There's nothing there for that to do. You would need to, it, it's, the, it's the 3D graphic environment that you're only able to do that in. And if you move outside of the room, then the sensors lose their bearings and you don't, and it doesn't really know where it's at, okay? So it, it, there's no, it can't figure out where you are with respect Unless there was some way that you could have like a some beacons, some radio beacons somewhere in your house that would use um, triangulation to determine where your headset is with respect to the house, then you could actually be able to move beyond your room into other rooms and be able to determine where you are in 3D, in, in complete 3D space. Um, not with respect to the room and not and the controller is not with respect to your headset um, because that's how the sixth off is doing it um, and uh, so but that's the thing is is that you have to consider all the parameters um, I've had I've had three goes I had I sold one off to someone I have two goes one sits in my room it's connected to the internet the other one is it's got Minecraft on it, and I can't connect it to the internet because if it does, it'll update the Minecraft and it won't work because it's side loaded. It's a side loaded version of Minecraft, and that's the Oculus Go store doesn't have Minecraft, but that's like the only game that would be worth getting if you had an Oculus Go. So I suggest if you can do it, do it, get it, and then basically take that Go and and not connected to the internet if, if you want that kind of video game. That doesn't mean you can't have video experiences. If you have a PC, you can put a DLNA server on there. On Linux, it's very easy to get DLNA servicers. servers. You put a DLNA server, I don't know what it stands for, digital line something or other, network uh, something, DLNA. Um, you put it on that server and then you serve it up, up from your Wi-Fi router and uh, the you can have, um, see there's another problem is, is that you need 
two, you need separate Wi-Fi routers. You need one that's not connected to the internet, and then you need one that is connected to the internet if you're going to do Minecraft. If you're, um, so that's what, that's what you have to do if you're going to do Minecraft, is you can't connect to Oculus Go. Um, but if you want video experiences, but you can't connect the Go to the internet, to the internet um, because it would update itself, um, then you um, have two, two Wi-Fi routers, and a Wi-Fi router is really cheap. You can get a cheap one for like 30 bucks from, from Staples, and um, basically you just don't connect it to your, to your uh, cable router. And uh, then you connect your go to that, and then you hook connect a PC to that, to that Wi-Fi router, and uh, you can put movies and all sorts of things. That are, you have to install Linux, or put, or if it's got Windows, we put a DLNA server on there, and then you put your movies into the DLN, DLNA server, and then you get a program like Pe Pegasus for the for the Oculus Go. You do this before you install Minecraft. And then you are able able to connect from that app into um, the DLNA server. Actually, the Oculus Gallery will do will connect to a DLNA server, um, so you don't even need uh, Pegasus. You don't need any of those players. But you can. It's nicer than than the one that Oculus has because it gives you a lot of controls over like the orientation of the video with respect to your head um it's a lot easier to control in pegasus do videos vr is pretty good too but the problem with do is is that um i don't i don't know if it, it supports the lna uh it doesn't support the lna and so you, you can't connect it to a dlna server um and what you can do on DLNA server is just stick any old movie you want. If you can rip some movies, you can stick them in there. And then you can have, like, all of your DVDs already on demand on that server. And anybody that's in your household that can connect to the DLNA server can watch whatever they want to watch. And so if everybody has their own little headsets, um, if you're, if, I mean, if you're, if you got a, a family and you got uh, uh, some children and they got their little iPod pads and stuff, you know, their iPhones or something, they can watch their movies from the server. And so they could watch whatever movie you've got in your collection. Um, they, there might be reasons for you to be able to protect that. And there, I think there are ways to do that. But um, that's how you could be not connected to the internet but still have access to video content and be able to play Minecraft. So if you had a child that you're concerned about them having access to the internet, then you can do that. All you do is you just go to Wi-Fi router, you connect the headset to that, you connect the PC to the, to the Wi-Fi router, and you put your movies on that PC and they can access the, the videos from the PC through the headset or they can connect it from their iPhones and or from their iPods or, or iPads or whatever and then they don't you don't have to um, be concerned about them getting access to the internet and they can do all that stuff from within side of that router um, I do that and then I've got another one that's connected to the internet and that's the one that doesn't have Minecraft on it because you can't play Minecraft on an internet connected Oculus Go so that's the downside to, to until they put Minecraft on the Oculus uh, store, then uh, uh, it's I'm not going to have that that uh, headset connected. Okay, and that probably will never happen um, for whatever reason. You know, my, uh, Microsoft has their own mind about how they do things. How people they have relationships with in, in the business world and um and you know microsoft and facebook could probably be at odds with each other i mean they probably got their own cloud servers they're probably they probably see each other as competitors and when that happens there's probably no chance of one product getting on another product you know um getting into another product um 
they're not going to offer their services on the other product and it's going to be limited because they might use their product to actually leverage the other one to trying to do business things and the other one might be like forget you I don't I don't have any need to be a part of you and and actually be completely uh, juxtaposed to each other so um, anyhow but anyhow the the three doff is great virtual reality is great if you're in an apartment if you're in a mansion augmented reality is going to be nicer um, if you want to have 3d experiences in the environment you're in you won't feel bad about your living space so um, I mean it's not going to be it's not going to be a thing if you're living in an apartment who actually feels good about living in an apartment you know and so you're not going to augment reality is not something that's going to attract you um, the virtual reality will attract you augment you would probably want to have selective uh, augmented reality so you could at least see your children or see people doing things inside of the space and trying to prevent them from doing certain things but there are games that don't have augmented reality and augmented reality only makes sense in certain situations I mean, there's only certain kind of games that could like really make use of it um, effectively. And it's not, I just don't see the draw uh, or the attraction of augmented reality. Um, there is a kind of reality that nobody is going to touch because, um, and it's, it's in that area of what I consider to be these really uh, intellectual smart room where everybody else is stupid. Um, area and it's called extended reality and that is you actually will use say a little small device that has little cameras on it in a shorter distance between the cameras smaller cameras shorter distance you put them on a little device and then you put them in areas of your environment and then be able to control it like a like a motorized vehicle and this is, I, I haven't done this, but it is, it's something that attracts me. And the idea is just to go places in your space that you can't even put your head. And um, I call that extended reality. And nobody ever talks about that. And so um, if you're somebody who works on, um, on equipment, you know, say you're on a space station or something, and you have to get into work on something inside of the space station, What's the point in sticking your big, massive head, especially if you've got this big old glass, um, this big old, um, this big old orb that's going to prevent you from getting into anything? What's the point in using that? Why not use a little robot that you can control with your hands and um, use a, a virtual reality experience and have cameras on the thing and then be able to kind of use a smaller robot to actually get into uh, one of those one of those um, satellites and work on the satellite from the inside and and use its arms and and manipulate things with that and you wouldn't even have to be outside of the space shuttle to do that you could just put that little bot out there and he could go do it for you, you would use your you would use your controllers and you'd use your your headset uh, VR experience and it's a VR, it would say be extended reality, so it's VR plus something. And um, you could get into that satellite and work on it on the inside into the areas where you can't even get at, even with spacesuit, or even if, and just because you're so big, you can't even get yourself into it. So you, um, you would have to make yourself really small, which is physically impossible, and we don't have the technology to shrink people yet. Um, that's extended reality. Nobody ever talks about extended reality. I don't even know if there's even jargon for it anymore. I mean, at, at all. It's it's in my head. And I tell people about things like this. And they go, oh, wow. And then they just walk on the mirror way. Um, so. Anyhow. There you go. Virtual reality uh, makes a lot of sense. Pretty much for the future for us because we're gonna we're not going to be paid very well we're not going to be able to afford homes um, because the planet is is growing exponentially um, 
people are going to be living closer to each other um, and you're not going to like your surroundings and um, there will be noise in the environment things like that uh, noise cancellation being able to control the audio and being able to experience other things and go to other places is going to be more advantageous there'll be two choices if you're poor and you uh, want to go to other places one is do drugs two is do virtual reality and uh, that's the truth and there's a government out there that doesn't want people doing drugs so you've got virtual reality okay virtual reality there's nothing against it okay just a bunch of idiots like my brother who he's got he's he does artificial intelligence uh, algorithms he's smart that way he's stupid in perspective okay and he will never watch my video so I can say all the kinds of nasty stuff I want to say about my brother here and uh, he will never watch it so um, I'll just leave this I'll put it up on on YouTube